We have new information on the Type 054B frigates, the future super frigates of the Chinese Navy. They will form the backbone of China's blue water anti-submarine warships. China already has a vast fleet of Type 054A frigates. They provide a decent anti-submarine and anti-air warfare capability, especially when escorting aircraft carriers and destroyers. The Type 054B fulfills both of these roles, but will be much more capable. They will have much longer range air defense missiles, superior anti-ship missiles, and a more silent propulsion system for dealing with submarines. This video provides an update on the progress of the Type 054B and the emerging consensus on the ship's weapons. New hulls for warships have been seen at the Hudong Zhonghua shipyard in Shanghai. They have started final assembly, judging by new satellite images dated January 21st. One hull was seen in a large dry dock underneath two massive cranes. A second hull is being built in a smaller dry dock to the north. Hudong Zhonghua is one of the principal shipyards supplying warships to the PLAN, with a focus on frigates and amphibious warships, such as the Type 071 LPD and the Type 075. Together with the Huangpu shipyard based in Guangzhou, the two shipyards are responsible for the construction of the existing Type 054A frigate, of which more than 40 hulls have been produced. Rumors surrounding the Type 054B frigates have been around for several years now. They gained traction when several modules for warships were seen at the Hudong Zhonghua shipyard in late 2022. Based on the new satellite's image, the Type 054B has a length of approximately 147 meters and a beam of 18 meters. Therefore, it represents a radical increase in terms of size and presumably firepower compared to the preceding Type 054A. The Type 054B bears far more resemblance to the large frigates of the European navies, such as France, Germany, and Italy. Overall displacement is probably around 6,000 tons, somewhat larger than the previous consensus of 5,000 tons. In contrast, the incumbent Type 054A frigate is far smaller at 4,000 tons. This makes the Type 054B only marginally smaller than the Type 052D destroyers, the primary large surface combatants of the Chinese Navy. There's a couple of pretty strange things about the ship under construction. Most notably, there is only a single large rectangular hole in the front. The large hull is either for the main gun, a 100mm naval gun, or for the vertical launch system, the VLS, but not both. It is fairly common for frigates to have VLS launchers in the bow section, but not always the case. For example, the Danish Eva Hutzfeldt class does not have a VLS modules in the front. Instead, it has two naval guns in a super-firing configuration. The VLS for the Ever Hutzfeldt is located in the midship section. The prevailing consensus is that the Type 054B will have a large naval gun, so it is very possible its VLS is located in the midship, inside one of these holes towards the back. The size of the hull is much bigger than the HAJK-16 VLS on the Type 054A, suggesting a high likelihood it might be the universal UVLS. The UVLS can fire the large diameter weapons, including the HHQ-9B long-range air defense missile and the powerful YJ-18 anti-ship missile. 
However, the other explanation is that the expected opening for the gun in the front section is obscured by the crane in the photo. As you can see, part of the crane covers where one would expect the large opening for the gun would be. If true, this would suggest the large hole in the bow is for the VLS. And the O54B will have both a naval gun and a VLS for carrying missiles in the fore section. Indeed, most Chinese computer graphic artists still expect both a gun and VLS at the front. But we will have to wait and see. There is much debate over the type of VLS to be used. Some people believe the O54B will use the same VLS as on the Type O54A frigate, the smaller HAJK-16 system. It can fire basically two families of missiles. They are the U-8 anti-submarine rocket, and of course the HQ-16 series of medium-range air defense missiles. In fact, the latest variant of this missile, the HQ-16F, has achieved a fairly long range of 160 kilometers, and with an improved guidance system. The HQ-16F is very likely just as good as the air defense missiles on the large European frigate, and even destroyers. The argument in favour of the smaller HAJK-16 VLS are as follows. Firstly, the Type 054B is not the main air warfare ship of Chinese naval forces. Its main job is anti-submarine, with air defence as a secondary function. So the HQ-16 SAM is enough. Secondly, HQ-16F has already achieved enough range to fully cover a naval task force. True, it would lack the range to fully deter enemy aircraft, but that is the job of the destroyers. Thirdly, the HQ-16F has a dual guidance system. It combines active radar homing with semi-active radar homing. The semi-active radar homing makes the HQ-16 highly resistant to electronic warfare and interference within the medium range, so long as it remains inside the radar horizon of the O-54B. The target's illumination by the ship's own radars is far more powerful than the small seekers inside active guided missiles. The semi-active radar homing therefore has the power to burn through electronic countermeasures, much better than active radar homing at close range. The HQ-16 is arguably the superior missile to use in coastal environments, where there is plenty of sea clutter, which makes active radar homing more difficult. So the guidance system on the HQ-16F is more flexible than the long-range HQ-9 missile family. The HAJK-16 VLS is compatible with the rest of the PLA Navy frigate. So using the same VLS means that only two types of missiles will need to be produced and transported for Chinese frigates. Elder people believe that the universal UVLS will be used instead. The UVLS carries all of China's large diameter long-range weapons, including the HQ-9B long-range air defense missiles, the YJ-18 anti-ship missile, and a new type of quad-packed medium-range air defense missile, similar in function to the U.S. Evolved Sea Sparrow. The UVLS would take up more space for the same number of cells than the HAJK-16 VLS. In my view, it is more likely the UVLS will be chosen for the Type 054B. 
The operation of the HQ-9B surface-to-air missile across all Chinese blue water warships will greatly assist the logistics for supplying blue water naval forces. Over time, the Type 054B should take over from the Type 054A in Chinese destroyer flotillas and aircraft carrier groups. It is useful for them to use the same air defense missile from a logistic standpoint. The HQ-9B has a greater range than any of the HQ-16 variants, and should fulfill any role intended for the HQ-16 anyway. It is important to be able to use a quad-pack medium-range missile to augment the number of ammunitions carried. The UVLS can certainly quad-pack the new 50km range missile, while the HAJK-16 probably cannot. Lastly, the ability to use the YJ-18 anti-ship missile is important. The YJ-18 is a powerful strike weapon in itself. However, there is more to it. When launching a missile attack against enemy warships, it is desirable that they all arrive at the same time. This will make interception more difficult for the enemy. So it is better to use the same missiles in a single salvo, because they can be sure to travel at the same speed and arrive at the same time. Using different missiles in a single attack may cause some projectiles to arrive early, and they can be picked off piecemeal by the enemy. Therefore, the Type 054B should ideally use the same anti-ship missile as the Chinese destroyers they are intended to work with, and that is of course the YJ-18. The UVLS is necessary to carry the YJ-18. For all these reasons, I expect the Type 054B to use the universal UVLS. This is the more sensible weapon system to equip future PLAN warships. As we said before, the Type 054B will have a 100mm naval gun larger than the 76mm on the Type 054A. The 100mm should be a more powerful coastal bombardment weapon, with a greater range for attacking land targets while staying out of range of the return fire from land-based guns. The 100mm will also be more destructive against enemy warships at close range, the trade-off is that the 100mm may be less effective at engaging air targets, for example slow missiles, due to a slower rate of fire compared to the 76mm. The Type 054B will be a blue water warship, more capable, more powerful, and more future-proof than the Type 054A. It will be used for anti-submarine warfare and air warfare missions. At present, the Type 054B is being assembled inside two dry docks in the Hudong Zhonghua shipyard. At least two ships are being built, and more units will follow, no doubt. The first Type 054B will likely be launched sometime in 2023, based on the advanced stage of construction the ships are in. Once they are commissioned in sufficient numbers, they should slowly replace the Type 054A in Chinese destroyer flotillas and aircraft carrier groups. The Type 054A will remain in service for a long time, of course, but they should be gradually assigned to second-tier naval task forces, like frigate flotillas. In my view, China's future Type 054B frigate will be among the most powerful frigates in the world, and will set a new standard for future warship design.